everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye some embroidery yarn with commercial acid dyes. An acquaintance of mine sent me two different kinds of this embroidery floss. There is this uh, Rajamal Silk, which is a silk rayon blend, and then there is this bamboo yarn, which is 100% bamboo. I do not expect the bamboo to take up any color from the acid dyes, but there's a chance we might see some staining, and so I figured I'd give one of the hanks a shot, especially because each embroidery skein is effectively a mini skein of yarn already. I just opened up one of the embroidery um, skeins, and ooh, I'm gonna wanna add some extra ties. You can see that there is some crimp in it, and uh, I'm excited. Through setting up this project with an acquaintance of mine, I have learned a lot. And the biggest thing I've learned is that there's a big difference in terminology used with knitting yarns and those that use them for embroidery and needlepoint and things like that. Um, embroidery yarns like this are sold in terms of yardage. And there are some metrics for how thick the yarns are, but the terminology isn't the same as, say, the lace weight and fingering weight and even cobweb that we might use um, or that I typically use as knitters. Likewise, when asking how much yarn there is, the yarn isn't sold with grams. So frequently I deal with 100 gram skeins. That's the standard for um, independent yarn dyers who are dyeing yarn for um, knitting and crochet. But here, I'm gonna go and weigh this to see how much yarn there actually is. Let's see how much there is. This silk blend is 35% silk, 65% rayon. And there are 1.5 grams per skein. Okay, that is not very much, but it is good to know, so that way I can really get a feel of how much dye to use. The technique I'm gonna to do today is sort of a yarn mop-based technique with the acid dye powder. This is very similar to what I did in the June 2019 Chemnitz dye along, but mostly off camera. Let's take a look at the bamboo, which is still on the cardboard. Okay, so max 4.3 grams, but there's a lot of cardboard in there. The bamboo, it's about 2.4 grams. I have pre-soaked the bamboo and our silk rayon yarns for about an hour but I'm also pre-soaking some Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering Weight Yarn to function as a yarn mop for this yarn mop recreation. Um, ultimately, the total amount of weight of yarn in our minis is pretty small, so I wanna have a full 100 gram skein to help wipe the rest of the dye that I get on my gloves off. This is just water right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and add one, two, three, four, five tablespoons of white vinegar to all of our yarn. Um, I have added some of these reusable zip ties to the yarn so that way it can act, function as an extra tie and help keep things better. But right now I'm just trying to, uh, I guess, stir it up and make sure that we have everything soaked in acid for when I start dyeing all of this in a few moments. I squeezed out most of the water and laid out all the vinegar soaked yarn here on the counter. Um, I am going to go put on safety equipment in a moment so that way I can dip into the powders, like dip a glove into the powder, rub off the extra dye, and then sort of pre press onto all of this yarn. And I'm glad I have this extra yarn mop here because all things considered, the total yardage and total grams here are a lot less than what I used previously, and I got reasonable coverage on the skein last time. So we're gonna see what happens. I know if I'm doing this with intent, uh, things aren't gonna be quite as random because I'm gonna be having my brain on it and I'm gonna be thinking about it, but I am really excited for what we're gonna create. The nine colors we are using today are all Dharma acid dyes. Deep magenta, cherry bomb, saffron spice, sour apple, brilliant yellow, emerald green, sapphire blue, intense iris, and electric violet. And in between each of the colors, even with the yarn mops, I will be going and washing my gloves in the sink so that way I don't contaminate any of these powder stocks. 
Okay, let's go with the deep magenta for our first color. So normally I would go in and take a pinch of dye to speckle. I am rubbing the dye on my fingers, letting the doll fall in the container. Maybe go in a little bit more. Okay, so I've got this dye on my hands and I am pressing, just pressing it on to the fiber and then rubbing it off on the yarn mop. <laughs> yeah, and actually before I wash my hands, I am sort of pressing it in there. Now I'm gonna go wash my hands. Okay, cherry bomb. I am a tiny bit worried that I'm gonna get too much color. Um, on, ooh, that's kind of cool. On these, uh, yeah, I'm a little worried I'm gonna get too much color over on the actual skeins that I'm dyeing. But I suppose I can have them on top of the mop when I go and I steam everything. And I have not yet set up the steamer basket. <laughs> but I'm glad I attempted to add some specs. I think I'm gonna go through and do a lot of the rest of this as a time lapse now, with washing my hands in between each color. In a little bit, I will flip all of the yarn, and actually I might do that with this big one right now, so that way I can attempt to get some color on the other side, but we're gonna proceed and see what happens. Now, I sort of want to, as I'm mopping this, look for areas that I feel need more color, but I actually got some nice, like, reasonable coverage here. I am really actually happy with how this has come out. Um, and I know I'm gonna be wiping the counter more with this. Okay, friends, truthfully, I did wait some time here, mainly uh, because I wanted to get the, um, mainly because I wanted to get the steamer basket set up. You can see there's a little bit of powder around here, and so I'm going to sort of remedy this by sort of moving things around a little bit here on these skeins themselves. That'll also bring in some of this random nest to them, I hope at least. Okay, so we're rainbowy. I'm gonna go plop these in the steamer basket. Sort of as is. And then we have our actual mop for this yarn mop project. And you know what? We are gonna wipe up a lot of this powder as well. Because honestly, let's leave no dye behind. Now I'm going to go place this mop on top of the other yarn in this steamer basket. Uh, yeah, just you, literally directly on top. Literally and mostly on top. Um, I just started heating, but I am going to go ahead and let this steam for 40 minutes. 40 minutes are up, I just turn off the heat. And whoo, we are steamy. Still really steamy, but there in the back, you can see that the color spread on what I think is the bamboo, probably because they didn't set. But it looks like on our silk blend, um, I still see some of that original cream yellow showing through. And our hawthorn looks very, very similar to the way it did at the beginning. So I'm going to let all of this cool now, and then we'll come back in a little bit. Taking a peek in our dye pot, there is a color that leaked down, but, aha, I am seeing a tiny bit of color on my hand, definitely some color 
on the pan itself. But let's start washing. And you can see, because I'm washing everything together, we can see some immediate bleeding because, as I said, we are washing everything together. Whether it is um, able to be dyed with acidized or not. I am also noticing um, a reduction in pigmentation of our, here is our sole bamboo guy. Right off the bat, but we might legit have some staining to it. Um, here we go. Yeah, we'll see how much of that rinses out, and we might end up deciding to rinse it separately from the silk. So now, I've only got green dish soap here. Normally, I like to try to do clear dish soap as much as possible. Um, because then, oh my gosh, this stuff is kind of a nightmare. I normally like to try to use clear dish soap with um, my yarn because that way I can tell if what I'm seeing is bleeding or just color uh, runoff. But you can see that more and more of the color is rinsing out of the bamboo. So as I predicted, there will likely be some staining here, but it won't be anything near as pigmented as what we see on the wall. So anyway, I'm going to keep washing these ones and then we'll go to the actual wool sock yarn. Now for our wool based yarn, let's go and see. And just to show, here's where the silk and bamboo are, here's where the wool is. And there was no, I guess, dye left behind on that side. I'm finding those those minis very hard to manage and very tangly. But here, where we have so much more yarn and probably a lot more color overall, I'm not seeing any bleed, which is what honestly we would expect from a wool. A wool nylon blend. This is 80% Peruvian Highland wool, 20% polyamide, and it is beautiful and these colors are bright. It is a lovely, lovely yarn knot. It's definitely less saturated than the one I did in the live stream, but I didn't go into the dye containers as much as I did here. So, I'm gonna go put everything in the spin dryer, clean it up to dry, and then we'll be back. I expect these colors will lighten when the silk dries, but just compare sort of how muted those colors feel versus how bright and distinct and separated the colors are still there. Here is the finished fiber that we dyed, attempting to recreate my yarn mop. Clearly, the yarn mop, the Knit Picks Hawthorne 100 gram skein, worked beautifully. And we will compare this to the original yarn mop in a moment. Um, we got some beautiful, beautiful colors on the bamboo and the silk ran threads, yarns, but they're not as vibrant or sharp as what we see on, on our wool polyamide blend. I'm glad I put the one skein of bamboo in the mix. You can see that we got some staining. Now, if you look back, at what things looked like when we added the dye. This doesn't even look close. And I think that we can also see that we did get some more color in the silk rayon blend, but 35% silk is relatively low. I think that this would have worked a lot better with 100% silk, or better yet, 100% wool. Um, I know that acid dyes can be used for silk. I haven't played with them with 100% silk yet, to get a sense of how they strike. But with food coloring, I know that colors strike to silk a little bit slower, need a little bit more acid than they might with say a superwash wool or even a non-superwash wool. As for our yarn mops, the bottom is the one that we dyed in this video. And the colors are overall less saturated and there's a lot more speckling that you can see versus the original yarn mop that was our sort of inspiration for this whole project. I don't think that 
it's bad and certainly we got close but the main difference here is that this time with the original one I was speckling and then whatever dye was left on my fingers I would wipe it off on the skein of yarn and I did this for all of the colors twice with this original skein with the one in this video first well, I wasn't actually speckling. I was just rubbing my fingers in the dye. But then first I touched our little minis and then I wiped my hands off on this yarn. So it was a little bit different. The amount, the amount of color that I picked up was definitely different. I went into the pot fewer times. And so the total amount of pigmentation is just different overall. Both are stunning and they're definitely related. They are in the same family and you could totally fade one into the other. That could look really, really cool. But yeah, the, the differences are subtle, but the differences are there, if that makes sense. The other thing that's really making the difference stand out is just that the proportions of color are different. Um, one had a lot more of the purple and the other one is a lot heavier with the green. And so even without the other differences, subtle differences on the technique and the attention, that alone would make things seem different, even if I was dyeing, you know, five of these mops all at the same time. Even though this is not quite what I was going for, these colors are beautiful. There's these random rainbow of colors on either the 65% uh, rayon, 35% silk, or the 100% bamboo yarn. The blues feel a bit lacking, and not because there wasn't any blue used. I definitely used the blue, but um, this, the Silk Rayon Blend yarn, did start off slightly yellow, so then anywhere the, some of those blues shift a little more green in there. And then with the bamboo, well, that's just a bit of staining, so who knows? Uh, you can't really predict what colors would stick behind there. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know that I learned something. I have never tried dyeing this blend of yarn before, and maybe it would be worth me going and researching some embroidery sites to get some fiber blends that we don't find in yarn as often. Um, I think that that could be really, really fun just to experiment with different dyes and see what kind of colors and techniques we can do that translate onto different types of fiber. What fiber types or blends of fiber would you like to see me try dyeing? Um, let me know in the comments. And while you're at it, like the video, subscribe, turn on notifications, and all of that jazz. Thank you so much for watching.